Miss Simrino. If you are returning to the channel, welcome back. And if you are brand new, I am very excited that you decided to join me here today for another speed build. And let me start off by saying thank you so much for bearing with me this week. I have been very sporadic in my posting because I have been super sick. As you can probably tell, I might sound a little nasally. I apologize ahead of time. I may not sound that great because I am still kind of sort of getting over it. This is the first day that I have felt like a human being all week. So I am stoked to kind of be back here and get back in the groove of things. And today we are building a little grocery store. So I wanted it to be like kind of your small town grocery store where your local farmer comes up with their truck filled with pumpkins from their pumpkin patch and you can buy them on your way in or out of this little kind of local market. And I just loved the idea. It seemed very, very homey, very comfortable, very loving. I don't really know how else to explain it, but it seemed so cozy to me and I just really, really liked the idea. And as I've mentioned, five million times already. I'm from New England and I feel like this is a really common thing. So when I was actually on vacation in Maine a couple of weeks ago, I was about an hour away from any large chain grocery store. So think Hannaford's, Aldi's, Whole Foods, whatever other chain you wanna throw out. Those were like an hour away from where I was actually staying. So all that I had available to me was this little tiny local grocery store, like 15, 20 minutes down the road. And it was adorable and it was perfect. And that's kind of what inspired this. So I did wanna make it a very small little location and I wanted it to be completely decked out for maybe like spooky day slash fall is what my thought was. So I did put that truck there and I put like pumpkins and other kinds of crates and stuff like that around. There's like a cooler there. I put the scarecrow over on the side as well too, a little bit later on. And what you will notice in this video is that there are a lot of transitions. There are a lot of transitions because Pulling out all of the individual items from the debug menu that I used took so freaking long. Literally, I think all in all, this build took me about three to four days. And that even wasn't, that wasn't even because I was sick. Like that was because it took that long for me to take each individual debug item out of the menu, plop it on the floor on the interior to, to get ready to utilize. And then it took me so long to raise each individual item to the height that I needed it to be at because some of them will actually clip to a surface, whereas others will not. So you had to raise them. I had to figure out how many like Alt-9, like, or is it Alt? Yeah, Alt-9 raises I had to actually click to keep them all at the same height. And oh my gosh, it took a really long time, but I ended up moving through it kind of quickly nearer the end, of course, right? When you start getting in a groove. But yeah, you guys will see when I get inside, like, how many items I pulled out and you could kind of like theorize how long it would take, but we're almost done with the exterior here. I'm just kind of adding some light posts and some benches and other little fun decorative things and trying to figure out the roof, which I end up just making, like I get rid of that little middle piece and I end up just making it kind of like that diagonal roof, I guess, I don't really know. And now we're on the interior, as you can see, these are all of the individual food items that I took out of that menu. So I create this little half wall and I put the console table from Cats and Dogs, and then I put this little overhang here, and there are two of these, one is for fruits and then one is for veggies, and I really, really liked this idea. I thought it was really adorable. So I was trying to find some kind of like wall decoration to signify that this is where the fruits are because I did find that other one that I think was from, I think it was from Dine Out? Yeah, it was from Dine Out. So it kind of had like a menu of veggies and stuff like that. There's one for like fish and meats too, which I ended up not using and I kind of should have. But here you can see I skipped ahead and I had put most of these fruits up on display already, but I did want to show you what the process looks like. So I did use that OMSP shelf, which is a beautiful, wonderful shelf to use. It is a custom content item. However, I want you guys to note that I never leave it in my build. So nothing that I ever make will be flagged for using custom content, unless it's a weird glitch. But like I never leave custom content in my builds if I use it. And I honestly try not to use it that often anyway, because I want my builds to be very accessible to everyone, especially those who don't use custom content. But as you can see, it helped me raise items to the appropriate level. So there I was moving all of these berries over to the right spot and now I'm raising each and every single one up individually. And to give you an idea of how long that actually took, my speed builds are usually at 
like four times the speed or six times the speed. I believe this one is six. So it may look like it went fast, but it like really did not. It took a long, long time. And now I'm just doing the same over here in the little vegetable stand section that I ended up creating as well. I actually raised one of those console tables up in the middle just to kind of make make it have some dimension like i wanted it to kind of have different levels to it have some things raised up some things kind of like i don't know at arm reach with an arm's reach <laughs> i have no idea <laughs> oh gosh taking breaks from voiceovers can really mess you up sometimes i'm already babbling and not making sense and as you can see kind of off camera i was placing a few big ticket items there that i wanted to kind of fill with more of these debug items so the little kind of display shelf on the right is for bakery items. There is a debug item called bread and it's like three loaves of bread, which is super cute. And then I tried to place some bakery items. So I tried to place like cupcakes and cookies and stuff like that. But apparently this kind of debug item, when you place it, so like in the menu, it displays them. But when you actually place it, it's only the plate and then you can't delete it, which is kind of weird. I, I don't fully understand it. But then again, I'm not very savvy with that kind of stuff anyway. So I'm assuming your sim would just have to clean that stuff up and then like make new baked items to be displayed there. So I apologize if that's kind of an inconvenience, but I didn't discover it until I was pretty much done with the build. And then I realized you can't delete the plate. So I couldn't like undo my actions. <laughs> I really couldn't do that. Cause I would have un I would have undone. Yeah, is that the word? I would have undone like a lot of stuff. So anyway, and then over here, I kind of put like a shelf within this display shelf. And I just put like some milk jugs up there. I know it's not a refrigerated area and that's most likely where you would find milk, but I thought it at least worked for the purposes of this build because I don't believe any of these items will go bad. I did play like a couple of days with my Sim owning this as a retail lot, which by the way, a lot of these items are set for sale. So I would recommend actually setting this as a retail lot so you can actually go and like buy some of these groceries. However, some of them, if they are not actually named by the object, so some of them are named literally like apple or strawberries or milk jug, something like that, I believe those can be set for retail. However, some of them can't be if they have the title of debug. And actually even the milk jug, it's called milk jug, but I don't think I could set it for sale because it's an item that your Sims just kind of like whip out of nowhere when they're making ice cream. So like some of these items literally are like the definition of the debug items and you can't do much with them. So it was a little janky. Like there are some items you can buy and some of them you can't, which is kind of a bummer, but I set as many items as I possibly could for sale. And I did it like individually. Like I clicked on every single item that I could set for sale and set it for sale. So your Sims could actually go in there and buy them as if they were at a grocery store. Granted, they're gonna be like, they're gonna be interrupted by your Sims employees being like, yes, which apple would you like to buy? We have Honeycrisp, we also have Macintosh. Are you sold yet? Hmm, I don't know. Like that's how it's probably gonna go and it's gonna look really funny, but I liked the level of realism that I was attempting here. So hopefully you guys will enjoy it too because I really miss the ability to go grocery shopping and I really miss the grocery stores because we used to have those in The Sims 2 and The Sims 3, as I mentioned in a previous speed build or even my Discover University wishlist, I don't even remember, but I was recently playing The Sims 3 University Life. I downloaded it, went far down the road of nostalgia, got so hyped up <laughs> for university, but also I got really nostalgic for grocery stores because you could go to the grocery store and you could go buy groceries. And like, I mean, that's real. So I was really excited about it. Anyway, now I'm putting the cash register down and then just some flowers and some little pumpkins on display at the one register in the center of the little marketplace. So I'm assuming your Sims could like walk around in a circle, grab what they need and then walk right up to the register, which I thought was such a cute idea. I really, really liked this one. I really hope you guys enjoy it too. And hopefully it works for you. I mean, if there's a better kind of lot type for this to be, I would be open to any and all recommendations because I thought it was cool to make it a retail lot. I thought that that was a neat idea because I really just couldn't think of any other lot type to make it that I think would work. So you guys will have to let me know what you think. And now I'm working on the back here. So I end up just placing the bathroom like off to the side because there kind of needs to be a bathroom here. And in the back, I do put a little bench, some more kind of fall decorations and pumpkins and some picnic tables as well as the seasons. I think it's the fall or autumn uh, little like food vendor there. So it's actually more like 
drinks and some seasonal snacks, I think, like maybe donuts and stuff. I don't even know. I haven't, I don't use those too often. So I'm honestly not really familiar with what it offers. And then I post more of those lights there. So you could make this a kind of like winter wonderland as well. You could change the swatch of those lights. You could change out that vendor tent there and maybe just some of the decorations around here. So it is kind of, I don't know, it's a little versatile and I might change it up for winter as well because I thought that that would be kind of fun. You could actually have them sell Christmas trees in the back. <gasps> I'm making a Christmas tree lot. Oh, I like that idea. Oh yeah, Christmas tree lot. Or a Winterfest tree lot, whatever you wanna call it. Oh, I'm gonna do that for winter. Guys, look out for that as we get closer to Christmas. Fun fact. <laughs> but yeah, this is pretty much it for the speed build. So I really hope that you guys enjoyed this. I can't wait to hear your thoughts about this and give me any other recommendations or things you'd like to see. But I will catch you guys next time I post a video and I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Like no one else even really scratches the side